If you've ever been snorkeling before, you know what it feels like to breathe through a tube slightly under the water. You can see cool things like I found these dolphins here. But what's the limit to how deep you can go under the water breathing through a tube? Today we're going to check it out. At just a depth of 10 feet, I physically couldn't take a breath no matter how hard I tried. It felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. I couldn't get the slightest bit of air into my lungs. To make sure I wasn't some weak breather, I had my friend try it as well. And still nothing. And what's worse is that right when you jump in, if your airway is open, the air gets sucked out of your lungs so you don't even have a breath of air to rely on under the water. Your lungs just get flattened like a pancake. We know that you cannot breathe underwater 10 feet, no chance. So I'm going to go to the depth where I feel like I can take a breath. So. Right there. I can hear it. We found our limit to be around three to four feet of water depth before we couldn't take a breath at all. <laughs> The reason we can't take a breath is because at around 10 feet of water depth, there's around 433 pounds per square inch of pressure pushing on your body. You can see the pressure just crush the air in this bottle here. So you physically can't inhale because you'd be pushing against thousands of pounds of force with your chest. So when you hold your breath and go under the water and dive that no. deep, that's actually what's happening to the air inside of your lungs as well. It becomes compressed air. Because it's compressed air, it's easy to exhale under the water. You can let out bubbles. But what if you're not under the water and try to blow air bubbles into the water? So now we're just going to try to blow air the whole way down and see when I can't even blow air out of my mouth anymore. Your muscles that blow out air are actually stronger than your muscles that suck in air. But still, you can't even overcome the pressure of the water to blow the air out at that depth. But what about those vintage deep sea divers that you've seen in movies? They have an airline that's supplied through a hose that goes to the surface. How do they take a breath? Well, there's a key component to surface supplied air. It has to be pressurized. So the compressed air can overcome the pressure of the water and you can take a breath. So let's see if we can go a little bit deeper if we supply compressed air. So we're gonna hook to the end of the hose. Spencer's gonna be the guinea pig at the bottom trying to breathe through it with the compressor. So now we're compressing the air to give it a little more pressure behind it and see if he can actually breathe. Okay, I'm gonna head down and see. This is just a warning to not ever try this, compressing air, pushing it down through a tube, and then breathing it at the bottom of a pool. We used a pretty weak compressor, but here's the danger. You take a breath of that compressed air under the water, and then if you hold your breath and surface with that air, now the air inside of your lungs expands. And so you can really injure yourself when that air tries to expand inside of your lungs if you don't let the air out as you go. It's the same thing that divers have to do. If they have breaths of air, you can't just keep that air in your lungs as you surface. Yeah, I mean, could you breathe? It's hard, it's like little breaths that have like that. And before we end, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Nautilus. Nautilus explores big ideas in science. Its stories present ideas that will be debated long into the future, and as a result has established itself as the foremost literary science magazine. The most well-regarded scientific minds in the world read and write for Nautilus, as well as literary giants like the late Cormac McCarthy, who published the first non-scientific piece of his career in Nautilus. You can join as a digital-only member or print to receive six beautifully illustrated award-winning collectible editions that are a staple of any respectable home library. 
In addition to full access to all the stories in Nautilus, members receive benefits like priority access to events, exclusive products, and product discounts. For example, last year Nautilus and the Schmidt Ocean Institute brought a traveling art exhibit called Artists at Sea to New York's Legendary Explorers Club and the UN Ocean Decade Conference in Lisbon. And they gave limited access for Nautilus members. If you were in attendance, you'd have been mingling with artists, scientists, dignitaries, philanthropists, and of course your fellow subscribers of Nautilus. So if you want to subscribe to Nautilus, memberships seldom go on sale, but you can go to nautil.us slash action lab to receive 15% off your membership. That's N-A-U-T-I-L dot U-S slash action lab. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.